Hi, welcome to Road CC and our YouTube channel. As ever, we're here to help you get more from your bike and enjoy your time riding it. Today, we're gonna to talk about tire levers. All right, calm down at the back. How to choose tire levers. Welcome to another Road CC tech video. And in this one, we're looking at the removal of tires, specifically the tools that you use to achieve this goal. Now tires are designed to be a tight fit with the rim that they're designed to work with. The trouble is, even though we've got computers running our lives, we, and that's the bike industry we, can't actually definitively make tires or rims for that matter to a dimensional standard and tolerance that absolutely guarantees that every 25 millimeter wide 700C tire will fit every 19 millimeter wide 700C rim with a snug, uniformly tight fit. It's just the way the world is. Every now and again, it's possible to select a tire and rim combo where the fit is either so sloppy that the tire literally falls into place, or it's so tight that it takes a team of tool wielding mechanics to get the last few inches of bead over the rim edge. Most times, it's good practice to have a tire and rim combination that can be fitted entirely by hand. Most tires can be fitted to most rims with good technique and some decent hand strength. So why bother with a tire lever, then you might ask? Well. That one time you get a flat and have to remove the tire in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a tire lever to hand, you're gonna look pretty silly. Particularly in the cold, the wet and the mud, if you're a mountain biker or a winter mile muncher, we're talking about you, this can really exacerbate the issue. That's not to say that you shouldn't have a tire lever with you when you ride, they weigh practically nothing and tire levers should be there just to ease the last few inches of bead into position rather than being the thing you have to have to get the job done. The minute you're leaning on a tyre lever to the point where the thing's physically bending, you probably need to reconsider the tyres you're running. Oh, and maybe look at your tyre mounting technique too. That can also be a root cause of at least some of the issues where tyres are reluctant to be fitted to rims. Assuming that you're happy with the fit of your tyres and rims, the next thing to consider is the material of your rims. Now, carbon rims particularly need to be treated with a little extra care over their alloy counterparts as deep scratches or gouges are to be avoided as carbon doesn't like those even less than alloy does. So definitely, whatever you do, don't use anything metal. Thankfully, metal tire levers like this thing are largely a thing of the past, but even so, in extremis, don't use metal. The material for levers are thus plastic. <laughs> That's it. Surely a metal lever's stronger. Well, back in the day, I used to use metal tire levers on my old BMX rims, along with metal spoon handles, flat bladed screwdrivers, and sorry to my parents for ruining all the cutlery, but the truth is, metal tire levers are great for motorcycles, but they're just too hard for use on soft alloy or carbon rims. Of course, it's a bit more nuanced than that, but only just. Some tire levers are harder and less flexible and occasionally brittle like the ones that come with Mavic wheels, the ones with the lever on one end and the hub pin spanner on the other. You know, snap one of those and it's doable and they go with a sharp crack. But in truth, you have to try pretty hard to do that. Ditto the short folding ones made by Nog, just too short, you have to just lever them too hard, they grow. On the other end of the spectrum, there are the bendy ones, like the monkey metal of the fastener world. These tire levers can sometimes be so flexy that the word levers really hard to pin on them. They just fail to offer any added leverage. Some are just made flexy through poor plastic selection by the manufacturer. Some just start out stiff, but soften after repeated use. You know, it's a bit like flexing a paper clip. These things just don't always last. The styles to choose from are pretty limited. I mean, they're like pencils. There's pretty much only one design. To be honest, I hadn't given it a lot of thought. Despite being a nearly 50 year old cyclist who's been using tire levers for 40 of those years. But when I looked at the motley collection of tire levers in my toolbox, this ragtag bunch of survivors of numerous patch kits, industry freebies and wheel manufacturer accessories and dedicated tire lever brands, I realized that I've more than a few, in fact, of a wide range of shapes and sizes to give me the perfect tire lever option for any combination of tire and rim. I guess they're cheap, so assembling your own slack handful of tire lever options isn't gonna break the bank or cause you to have to sneak another one into the house. No darling, that's not another brand new tire lever I've had. This old thing, I've had it for years. <laughs> You'll notice that most, though not all, tire levers have a little hook at the other end of the lever to the tongue. This feature is used to allow you to employ multiple tire levers on the same tire without running out of hands. The idea is that you work a lever under the bead, 
Cantilever the lever over the edge of the rim, lifting the bead. Carefully place the hooked end around the nearest spoke and allow the tension to hold it in position. You can now take a second lever and place it under the lifted bead to the side of the first lever and work it a few inches along before repeating the cantilever procedure. With both levers lifting the bead, you should be able to grasp the lifted section of the deflated tire carcass between the levers with a firm jolting motion and roll it off with your hands. Here's a rundown anyway on my accidentally curated collection of tire levers and what's good or bad about them. Well, the Mavic. Comes with every Mavic aftermarket wheel set. They're very stiff, broad, thin in shape, which is easy to handle, but they're brittle. And I've snapped a few wrestling with the toughest tire and rim combination. Oakley. This thing's been here for absolutely ages and it came attached to the swing tag on some Oakley mountain bike apparel. Got a nice organic feeling, a nice rounded shape. It's a bit ill-defined on the tongue, but handy for sliding in between the very tight bead gaps used in conjunction with the others. Pedro's. Uh, not the infamous recycled milk levers that were so flexible that they were useless, but these are pretty decent, delivering good performance uh, on most tyre rim combinations. It's actually a really good one. Topic. Narrow, not too deep, with a well-defined tongue. Not too much angle on the head, but it's ideal for picking under tight tire beads, particularly when removing uh, really recalcitrant tires. Pretty stiff, pretty nice. Uh, what else have we got? Freebie MBUK. Got a few of these from over the years. Nothing like as stiff as the Mavic, not as brittle either. In fact, there's some flex in there, but not enough to stop it working. Park tools, thick, narrow, a bit hard on the fingers, but they are a really good shape. Zero flex and a great angle on the head to lift the tire bead over the rim edge. Lazine. This is a really nice tire lever, really slim, not much flex in it at all, and a very detailed head, which makes picking and pulling uh, a, a really easy job. And it's also quite uh, shallow, so you can slide it nicely uh, across the rim. Uh, again, another really nice choice. The selection of tire levers on offer is obviously much wider than my little collection. And now that you're a bit more up to date, you at least have a decent idea of what to look for when you're on the search for your perfect tire lever. So there we go. If you've enjoyed that, please like and subscribe, hit the bell icon. That's gonna allow us to make sure that we keep you up to date every time we upload fresh content to the Road CC YouTube channel. And it's gonna keep you completely on top of enjoying your bike.